Go ahead. Still yeah, on the region. They also discussed Ukraine and uh, the, the increase in defense partnership between Russia and Iran and its implications for security in the Middle East. Can you explain the most implications that the U.S. fear it would impact the region in light of this increasing cooperation between Iran and Russia? Well, this is a position that we have long held, that Iran's uh, destabilizing actions, most recently uh, we've seen those precipitate as the provision of UAVs and uh, other kinds of security assistance to Russia for use in Ukraine. Uh, is deeply destabilizing. It's troubling not just for uh, the world, but also has immediate impacts on uh, Israel and uh, uh, Israel's neighbors, as well as uh, other countries in the region as well. So Hello, Gita, Gita, I'll, I'll, I'll Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Let me go to Gita, go ahead, go ahead. and then I'll come. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gita. Yeah, speaking of uh, the uh, Iran's um, destabilizing activities, um, I want to go back to yesterday's subject. Um, the EU Parliament yesterday approved and today issued a uh, resolution for the um, uh, to sanction uh, human rights abusers in Iran in general and also the designation of the IRGC as a terrorist group and I want to focus on this. Um, does the uh, State Department think it's a good idea for the EU to also designate the IRGC just like the U.S. Let me say a couple of things to that, Gita. First, we are aware of the European Parliament's resolution. Uh, the United States position on the IRGC has been quite clear. Uh, it is an entity that is subject to perhaps the most U.S. sanctions of any entity on the planet. Uh, we have also specifically sanctioned many IRGC leaders individually for their involvement in terrorism and human rights abuses. Uh, ultimately, though, Gita, it is up to each country, or in this case, uh, up to the EU, uh, EU blocks of countries to determine uh, what is applicable under their uh, uh, governing systems and their legal systems uh, and what is in their best interests. Uh, as you know, we've applauded the EU's recent designations of IRGC officials and entities for their involvement in the provision of drones to Russia, uh, which are being used to fuel Russia's infringement on uh, Ukrainian sovereignty and use, being used to attack Ukraine's critical infrastructure. Uh, but beyond that, I don't have anything. Well, it's clearly, it is, yes, it's, uh, it depends on their laws and regulations and everything. It's their decision. But um, the NSC tells us uh, that uh, the White House supports the designation and even encourages the EU to use all the authorities that they may have to designate the IRGC. So does the State Department think differently from the NSC? Uh, I would have to refer you to our White House and NSC colleagues to, to clarify uh, any comment that they gave you. But uh, I would reiterate just what I said, which is that the United States position on the IRGC is quite clear. Uh, we have taken a number of steps uh, and have, as I said, it is uh, an organization that is subject to perhaps some of the most US sanctions. Uh, and ultimately, it is up to the uh, EU bloc of countries to determine uh, what uh, kind of apparatus is most applicable or makes the most sense for the system uh, that they have and what is in their best interest. No, but on, you continuously say that you consult uh, with the allies and partners on everything. It can't be that this subject is an exception. What does the State Department, what has the State Department advised or talked about to the um, yeah. We, of course, consult with our allies and partners on a number of issues, including, of course, our united approach when it comes to the Iranian regime's uh, malign and destabilizing activities. Uh, of course, a lot of those developments are private and will remain private. Uh, but again, the United States position on the IRGC is quite clear. Just quick Michelle, follow up ahead. on this. Uh, how do you see the impact of this possible designation on reviving the nuclear deal even the role of the Europeans through the negotiations? We have uh, been clear for quite some time that the uh, JCPOA is, is not on the agenda, and it is not on the agenda largely because uh, the Iranians killed any uh, possibility uh, of it being on the agenda. Michelle. Uh, 